All right, guys, welcome back to the Night Out channel, and welcome to the series where we're just going through the franchise mode. Another nine games is upon us, and we're starting it off against the Vancouver Canucks. Cody Eakin has returned from his injury, and he will be joining us in the lineup for this game. 30 seconds into the first period, Vancouver with a big hit for them, starting the game off pretty rough. And then about seven minutes later, Vancouver with another big hit. Nothing's really going on, kind of a slow start. And then about one minute later, a turnover that Bernier ends up saving on the power play ridiculous to see just i don't understand why we have a hard time passing the puck uh but bernie makes a good save moving into the second period a couple minutes in demko with a good save good chance for us but he ends up stopping us then about a couple minutes later vancouver gets their first goal of the night putting one behind bernie and making it one nothing about 30 seconds later demko with two good saves keeping the game in their favor and still making it only a one goal deficit and then about five minutes later i think my dad's created character actually had the puck and hits the character that was going to hit him back with the uh, the bounce back ability, so it was kind of cool to see that. And then about a few minutes later, Bernie with a good glove save, keeping the deficit to one. Followed by Zach Cassian with five minutes to go with a huge hit, trying to get some momentum going. Going into the third period, down by one, Arturo starts it off with a huge hit for us. Followed by Bernie with another great glove save. You love to see it. Unfortunately, Bernie is only to able to do so much as Vancouver puts another goal in the back of the net with about 16 minutes left to go making it unfortunately two to nothing about 40 seconds later although jb with a goal in the breakaway finally getting one for us big play big moves one two in favor of vancouver still but we got a little bit of momentum in our favor it's given down to the last 10 minutes my dad's creative character with another huge hit just trying to get that momentum going and it is successful as a couple minutes later paul finds the back of the net for his eighth on the season tying it up at two to two i'm getting excited we actually have a chance of pulling this off and then with about five minutes to go, my feelings don't go unwarranted with Thomas Yurko finding the back of the net, third on the season, giving us the advantage, three to two, five minutes left, and it's looking really, really good. Skipping down to the last minute, Vancouver with a big hit on one of our players, and then about 20 seconds remaining in the game, my dad's created character secures the victory for us, getting the empty net, making it 4-2, great game by us, very well played. Jonathan Bernier definitely carried us to this win, but I love that third period effort by us as we were able to get the goals that we needed in order to win this game. But a very good first game, love to see it. We're taking on the Minnesota Wild next. Let's see if we can carry that momentum into the next game. All right, moving on to game two against the Minnesota Wild. We're coming off the big win off of Vancouver. Let's see if we can carry it on into this game. Four minutes into the game, Bernie with a good save, keeping it where it's at. If there's one theme that is very prevalent among this game, among this epi these episodes, it's that Bernie definitely carries us. About 30 seconds later, a big hit for one of our guys that we knocked the helmet off of one of their players and then skipping down to the last 10 minutes huge hit by our guys two big hits one of their players ended up getting injured and we are coming out rough and rowdy against the minnesota wild to start this game off skipping down to the last five minutes bernier with a very good save keeping the game all tied up and allowing us to go into the second period tied at zero moving into the second period 30 seconds in arturo with a huge hit really carrying that momentum from the first game and the first period over into this one and then about two minutes later mcintyre with a good save keeping the game all tied up unfortunately one minute later minnesota finally finds the back of the net putting it in their favor one nothing in favor of them but i like the way we've been playing so far 30 seconds later five on three power play go from cody eakin getting his eighth on the season he loved to see it tying it up taking advantage of the opportunity we're given and it's all tied up at once. Skipping down to the last seven minutes, Bernier with a one-time blast save, keeping the game tied. And then, skipping down to the last minute and a half, Glenn Denning with his third goal on the season. Hell yeah. Let's go. Two to one. And we're going into the third with a great, great lead. About a minute and a half into the third period, we're just piggybacking off of that momentum. Zeroni with a rebound goal, getting his ninth on the season. Very good effort. Three to one. Huge advantage for us. I love the way we're playing. We're definitely outworking the Minnesota Wild and playing our hearts out. Love to see it. This is the team that I'm used to seeing. Two minutes later, Arturo with a big hit. Guy bounces off of the boards. I mean, it was ridiculously big. Just keeping that momentum going. Skipping down to the last 10 minutes, McIntyre with a big save, keeping the deficit only to two, and then skipping down to a power play for us. Huge save from McIntyre on the penalty kill for the Minnesota Wild as they keep the deficit only to two. 
but if they can only keep us out for so long as one minute later my dad's creative character finds his eighth on the season what a great play a beautiful pass making it four to one and i am just in love with how we are playing right now love to see it and then we close the game off with paul getting his ninth on the season a one-time blast getting it past mcintyre taking a five to one win over the minnesota wild and this just shows we beat two nhl teams back to back we're able to play with them we just got to push for the playoffs and maybe get an opportunity to play for that cup. Let's go and move on to the next game. All right, coming back for game three, we're going against the Providence Pythons. This is the first game after they updated the game to where the on-screen ice projections will show up more. And as you can see, we've got the intro for Providence already activated. Let's see if we can pick up an easy dub against them. They're not doing too well. This should be an easy win, and we should continue on our win streak. First period starts off with two big hits from our team as we set the pace and the momentum for the game however about four minutes later providence doesn't care and they end up actually scoring a goal it's a little weird goal but it goes in behind bernier they make it one nothing and it's very interesting that they get the lead already a minute later miska with a good one-time save keeping the game in their favor and then about five minutes later a weird outworking you know in our defensive zone bernier makes a save at the end but just not playing very well in the beginning. We're just very sloppy. Bernie is saving our ass right now. And the deficit is still only one. Skipping down to the second period. Nothing else happens with that first period. We're about two minutes in when Miska makes a really good save. And then about four minutes later on the penalty kill, Miska makes two more big saves, keeping the game in their favor. We had multiple five on threes in order to put a goal in the net. And we could not do it. Very abysmal effort from our team. And we just couldn't really get anything going. The AI was a little wonky. Don't know if that was the update. Not very happy to see that, but it is what it is. Given down to the last couple minutes, Cody Eakins had enough of this, and it's about damn time because he puts one in the back of the net, getting his ninth on the season and tying the game at 1-1. Now moving on to the third period, skipping down to the last 12 minutes or so, we get a huge hit followed by another one a couple minutes later. So third period starts off pretty slow. We, you know, nothing's really going on. Just a couple big hits later on in the period, but the first half was kind of slow. Then another minute goes by, Arturo with a huge hit as well. And then another minute or so goes by and Bernie makes a big save on the penalty kill. Basically a two on one and stops it from going in. Skipping down to the last two minutes, what a pass. Uh, Azzaroni gets the pass out out of nowhere to Glenn Denning, who puts it right on to Miska, point blank, who ends up saving the goal and keeping the game tied at one. Props to Miska because he's stopping a lot of our shots and forcing us to go to OT. Straight into OT, Providence with a big hit on Tatar to start off OT, followed by another big hit a minute later on Azzaroni. Minute and a half, what is Yurko doing? I don't... The AI was just really weird in the OT. They've just been acting kind of weird. Just sitting, you know, he's just standing over there not doing nothing. Bernier saves the shot, but it was just very, very strange. And then about 30 seconds later, it's just another weird AI play. Like, what is the defense doing? Why is he moving away to the side of the, like, why is he going towards the boards? It's such a weird thing to watch. And then skipping down to the last 12 seconds, Miska with another good save, forcing us to go to the shootout. Shootout starts off with Gustav Nyquist going first as he puts one behind Miska right away, giving us the advantage. Then their player comes up and he ends up getting stopped by Bernier, followed by Thomas Yurko with a goal of his own, giving us a really good advantage as their second player comes on to shoot against Bernier and is unable to put it past him, giving us the W. Kind of disappointed the way we played. I mean, we got the win in the, you know, the end. Miska definitely was their MVP. He saved their asses. I think we had almost 40 shots on him and only one went past him, but just didn't like really how we were playing. Very slow, very sloppy. Could have been the update, the AI being messed with a little bit, but Providence didn't look like they had that problem. They just looked slow. They had a lot of good opportunities, and if they were a better team, they would have 100% beat us. So not too happy about our performance, but we got the win. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. All right, game four against the Anaheim Ducks. We have the special intro once again, so it's nice to see that that's going to be a repeating process for us. Let's see what we can do against him. Jumping into the first seven minutes, nothing's really going on until Bernier makes a good save down the stretch in order to keep the game tied at 0-0. Then about a minute later, my dad's creative character with a huge hit. First half of the period, nothing really going on. Very defensive. I like the way we're playing. I like that we're in the game. We're playing pretty hard. 
Then moving down to the last seven minutes or so, a power move by Justin Bailey getting around the defender and blasting it past John Gibson as he puts the game in our favor, 1-0. Then about two minutes later, Anaheim with a goal of their own. Bernier doesn't cover or he gets like poke checked or something. Something weird happens. Uh, incidental probably is what caused it to go in and they ended up getting a goal as well tying it back up one to one a minute later my dad's created a character with another big hit and then before the end of the first period anaheim will get another goal very weak shot but it seems to be bernier's kryptonite as he ends up not getting it and they end up getting another goal making it two to one moving into the second about a minute in arturo with a big hit on trevor zegras you love to see it and then about 15 seconds later tatar with a big hit of his own as well very scrappy physical type game that we've come out to play and I always enjoy seeing that. Skipping down the last 10 minutes, Anaheim with a big hit that is a penalty giving us an opportunity on the power play to go ahead and tie it up. Right off the bat, Gibson makes a huge save keeping the game in their favor and then about 30 seconds later, JB gets rocked trying to make a play in the offensive zone and they end up killing it successfully. Moving into the third period, again kind of a slow game, very defensive. There's been a couple good saves, a couple good hits, but nothing really monumentous but finally jb gets an opportunity to smack that puck in getting his 12th on the season and tying the game at two to two i'm all hyped up as we are able to tie the game up at two then a minute later anaheim didn't really give a crap about that because they end up putting one behind bernier making it three to two and then to add insult to injury another minute later they put another goal into the back of the net four to two and my hopes have pretty much dwindled at that point for the remainder of the game, nothing's really happening, nothing's really going on. They put another couple of goals in, they get an empty netter, they get one at the end of the game, but nothing monumentous enough to really include, and they end up coming out on top with a 6-2 to two victory. This is like the opposite of the Vancouver game when we were down and we came back in the third and played really well. We were playing decently well up until the third period, and then they kind of just, I don't know, I, I don't know, they just kind of got lazy and scored a bunch of goals, but... Overall, I think the effort was okay. Uh, the ending was just not very good. Obviously, the score reflects that. But yeah, I mean, I don't have too much to complain about. NHL teams are tough to go against. We have the ability to beat them. It's just about a matter if we can. Let's go and go on to the next game. All right, game five against the Nashville Predators. Coming into the game, hot off the loss of the Anaheim Ducks. But we've beaten the Canucks, we've beaten the Wild. Let's see if we can get a dub over the predator five minutes into the game we get a goal that gets called off at first i thought it was because they ran to the goaltender but i was watching the replay and i'm like there's nowhere he's nowhere near touching the goaltender so they were calling it to see if it was kicked in and it turns out it was not kicked in they give us the goal five minutes in one nothing in favor of us jb with his 13th on the season great corral great opportunity to put it in the back of the net and he doesn't miss then skipping down to the last minute because nothing's really going on in the first period. Very defensive like usual. Big hit on Matt Duchesne in the neutral zone. And then skipping down to the last 30 seconds, Bernie makes a good save to, to keep the lead at 1-0 going into the second. Second period starts off kind of slow until we get about three minutes in when Nashville gets a huge hit on Thomas Tatar. Flips him over. What the? the it was just insane to see. He actually gets up from that without getting injured, but gets flipped in the air, and we keep on going, I guess. Skipping down to the last 11 minutes, Nashville with a big hit on Nightvis once again. And then skipping down to the last six minutes, Bernier. Oh my goodness, what a save. Just on top of, standing on his head, getting this puck, keeping the puck from going to the back of the net. What a beauty, what a save. A couple minutes later, another big hit by us, and then skipping down to the last 40 seconds, Lankinen makes a good save to keep the deficit only to one. Going into the third period, about a minute in, big hit on Antonio as he gets elbowed, resulting in a penalty. And during the penalty, Lankinen gets a good penalty kill save in order to keep us out. Power play is dying down as Bernier makes an amazing save on the power play because my five guys got outplayed and outworked by their four people. So Bernier keeping us where we need to be because our guys just, again, we just don't know how to pass the puck. I don't know what's going on with that, but a few minutes later, my dad's creator character actually gets hit. He actually receives a hit instead of dishing it out. So it was very interesting to see that. Then a minute later, Zeroni with a big shot and gets rocked, and Lankanen makes a good save. And then about 30 seconds later, as Zeroni trying to go back into the offensive zone, gets hit once again. Nashville's playing pretty well. They're a very, very quick team, very fast. Uh, Bernie's been saving our ass up until this point. Let's see if we can close out with a 
Duh. Bernier a few minutes later with another good glove save to keep the puck out of the net. Then two minutes later, Bernier once again. What a save. Wow. Just a highlight reel save after highlight reel save. He keeps the game in our favor one to nothing. Then one minute later, Yurko finally gets a goal, making it two nothing. Corrals it fourth on the season. We get in a two nothing advantage over Nashville with five minutes to go. And then Zach Cassian finds the empty net for his 11th, making it 3 0. Bernier gets a shutout. He carries us to this win. Tremendous saves throughout the entirety of the game. And if it wasn't for him, we would have lost this game. Bernier carries us to another dub. And we fortunately come out on top, even though uh, I think Nashville kind of outplayed us this whole game. They were pretty, they're pretty good. They're a really fast team. Really, really good team. Really fast. Uh, but Bernier ends up holding on, and we end up getting those opportunities and cashing in on them. Solid performance by our boys. Let's see if we can get a few more wins before the end of the episode. All right, here we go. Game six against the Mavericks. We've already played them once and lost to them earlier in the year. Let's see if we can avenge our loss here. First period starts off very slow, very defensive, kind of a bouncing puck. Nothing's really happening. Then about seven and a half minutes in, Legacy makes a decent save, and he follows that up with another decent save about a minute and a half later. Skipping down to the last minute, a breakaway turns into a goal for the Milwaukee Mavericks. Wow, what a goal. I believe it was off of a turnover. Somebody passing it through the middle. Somebody grabbed it. Breakaway. Guy loses it. But somebody's right there to put the puck in the back of the net, making it one nothing in favor of Milwaukee. Moving on to the second period, within the first few minutes, Lagasse makes a good save. Skipping down to 11 and a half minutes to go, Bernier with a good one-time save to keep the game where it's at. And then 30 seconds later, a big hit from one of our guys. And then again, skipping down to the last two minutes, nothing's really happening, nothing's really going on. Just like with some of the other games, it's very similar to just nothing's really happening. But Bernier, what a save. Holy shit, he makes a big save. With two minutes left to go, keeping the game where it's at, holy Jesus. And uh, you love to see the effort by him. Moving to the third period, Milwaukee comes out swinging within the first three minutes as they put up another goal and make it to nothing. Then we're going to skip down to about ten and a half minutes with Arturo making a big hit. And then, again, nothing really happens in this period. We're just... I, I'm not very happy with how we're playing this game it's very very weird uh, i can sense the lack of enthusiasm or the lack of passion or just laziness they just seem slower i don't know what it is you know burning letting the goals in everything like that and we just can't seem to score but down to the last minute Lagasse makes another big save right in front of him, and uh, he did pretty well. He shut us out. Uh, we had about 20 shots on net, and he ended up stopping every single one of them. But uh, Milwaukee ends up getting the best of us once again somehow, and uh, I'm not a uh, not feeling too good about it. We have another game against them in a couple games, so game eight will be against Milwaukee once again. If we keep losing to these dudes, man, it's just I don't know what's going on. It's like we just. We get lazy against them, and then they take advantage of that. So, unfortunate result once again with Milwaukee. They take us down, and they shut us out. Um, let's see if we can do better in the next game. All right, guys, back for Game 7 against the Brooklyn Brawlers. Let's see if we can do better than we did in the last game. After a 2 nothing loss to the Milwaukee Maverick, let's see if we can get, hopefully, an easy win against Brooklyn. Five minutes into the game, nothing's really going on until Brooklyn gets a big hit to get the game really amped up and then 30 seconds later Zeroni starts off with a blast putting it behind the net power play goal one nothing feeling good let's go this is how we should be starting off these games and then Zeroni's gonna double down on that by getting another goal a few seconds later another rebound goal making it look super easy two nothing in favor of us this is how I envision the game should be going. Five minutes later, Bernie with a big save, keeping the game in our favor to nothing. Then skipping down to about seven and a half minutes, Paul finds the back of the net with his 10th on this season, making it three nothing in favor of us. And we're looking really, really good. Skipping down to the last five minutes or so, Brooklyn's not gonna go down without a fight. Uh, very interesting that they got this goal. They scored, I wasn't too worried about it, but it was interesting that they got a goal in general. I didn't expect them to really score at all but it just seems like when uh, we play against the you know lower teams our team kind of goes down to that level sometimes especially Bernie. moving on to the second period nothing really happens for the first seven minutes or so until brooklyn finds another goal and my thought when i saw it go in is are you kidding me because again i don't think we should really be this close of a like in this like if we end the game with only a one goal win it's kind of not that great for us because that just means we were playing lazy or whatever it is and 
you know, obviously a loss would be even worse, but we should be absolutely dominating teams like this. So it was a little shocking to see that they have now two goals, only down by one. Let's see if we can hold out until the end, I guess. Moving on, a few minutes later, Novak with a huge hit, just keeping that momentum going. And then about two minutes later, Jay Beagle finding the back of the net, getting a six on the season, giving us a two goal lead once again, making it four to two. And it's looking pretty good. Down to the last four minutes of the second period, Azzaroni with a big hit of his own, knocking down the player pretty well. And we're going into the third with a two goal lead. About four minutes into the third period, Langheimer, Langheimer, uh, the goaltender for the Brooklyn Brawlers, two big saves on the penalty kill, keeping the game where it's at. Then skipping down two minutes later, Brooklyn with a big hit for them, and then Langheimer with another good save as well. Then about a few seconds later, Cyclone Novak gets a shorthanded. Third on the season, incredible effort by him alone as he finds a way to get his own rebound and puts it behind Langhammer to push the lead to 5-2, to two, and we're looking really, really good. About four and a half minutes later, Langhammer, what a beautiful save. Dear Lord, did not see him getting this. I thought for sure it was going in. Zeroni was about to get his first hat trick, but Langhammer says no with the glove. He don't care about the cross crease one time behind the net play, whatever it was, because that was a beautiful setup. Langhammer ends up getting the puck and stopping us cold. Then the game kind of fizzles out. Nothing really happens. A big hit a few minutes later for Arturo, and then another big hit for us towards the end of the game. But that's going to wrap up the game seven with the Brooklyn Brawlers as it should be. Five to two, taking the win. This should be an easy win every time we play them right now. They haven't, you know, the teams haven't recovered yet. They haven't built their teams. We'll see what happens in the next season. But right now, we should be winning most of these games. Uh, game nine will be against the Brooklyn Brawlers once again. I expect a similar result. Uh, let's go ahead and take on Milwaukee for the second time within the episode. This should be a victory. All right, moving into game eight against the Milwaukee Mavericks. Can we finally get a win against this team? We're going in, let's see what we can do. First five minutes, nothing's really going on. Till about six minutes in, we got Will with a good save, keeping the game tied up. Pretty good defensive game to start off the game. Nothing's really happening. Uh, I don't know what it is with this team, but we just, we get weird with this team. Anyway, moving on about a minute later, we've had enough of that. JB gets a breakaway after he takes the puck away. 14th on the season. He does not miss. Well, it kind of trickles in, but he does not miss. <laughs> gets the first goal of the game, making it one nothing. We're not out of the woodworks yet, right? I don't feel secured as I did in the last game. We still, we got one game, but we still got a whole game to play. Let's see if we can maintain that lead. Skipping down to the last three minutes, nothing really goes on. We've got Paul getting rocked by somebody. Draws a penalty, though. He gets knocked down pretty hard. Antoine Roussel with a huge hit on him. Then about 10 seconds later, Will on the penalty kill gets a good save. Point blank shot, keeping the game where it's at. Moving into the second period, nothing's really happening within the first five minutes again. Uh, about seven minutes in, my dad's created a character, a huge hit on one of their players. And then about four minutes later, Will with another good save, keeping the deficit only to one for the Maverick. Fortunately, however, a few minutes later, Cassian with his 12th on the season, it's about damn time that he puts one in the back of the net because that finally makes the lead two to nothing. We're looking good, and I'm feeling a little bit better. Still not out of the woodworks just yet. Three minutes later, Thomas Yurko reinforces my feeling. Fourth of the season, blasted past Will. Three nothing, and I can ease up a little bit now because it's actually looking really good. Three nothing lead going into the third period. Very good advantage for us, but we are not done just yet. We still have one full period to play. I don't trust it just yet. You know, our team is a little weird at times, so let's see if we can hold on to it. Till the end of the game. Three minutes into the third period, Zeroni. What a play. Getting his 13th on the season, the fourth for our team of the ninth. Four nothing. I'm feeling really, really good. I'm, you know, at the point. I think we've got this in the bag, and it's looking really good. Skipping down five minutes later, they put Legacy back in, or Legacy. He was the goalie from last game who ended up beating us. Gets a good save on us, keeping the game only at 4 0. <laughs> then, about a few minutes later, Zeroni gets his second of the night, 14th on the season, kind of bounces in weirdly behind uh, Legacy, making it 5 0. We're looking really good here. I'm pretty sure we're going to get the dub. And we skip down to the last couple minutes or so where Paul gets his 11th, making it 6 0, which ends up wrapping up the game 6 0. Bernier gets a shutout, and this is how it's supposed to be. The last game was how it's supposed to be. This is how. We are supposed to be beating these teams. Absolutely dominating play. This is why I was so upset when we lose to the Mavericks, when we lose to the Firebirds, when we lose to the Piggies, when we lose to teams that we really shouldn't be losing to. This is the result that I expect every single time. Are we going to win every single game? Absolutely not. But we should be fighting. It should be a good game if we don't end up beating these teams. But for the most part, this is how the game should look. Let's go ahead and move on to the last game with the Brooklyn Brawlers. 
All right, heading into game nine against the Brooklyn Brawlers. We destroyed them last time. I'm expecting a similar result for this game. Let's go ahead and get into it. First couple minutes, Brooklyn comes out swinging with a rebound goal. Unfortunate that they were able to corral it that quickly and put it behind Bernier, making it a 1-0 game in favor of them right out the gate. A couple minutes later, Langhammer with two good saves on the penalty kill, keeping the game in their favor. And a couple seconds later, JB with a shot off the post. Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt us later. And unfortunately, the game stays in their favor. A couple minutes later, Brooklyn with a huge hit, keeping the momentum on their side. And then skipping down to the last four minutes, Bernier with a good save, keeping the deficit only to one. Three and a half minutes into the second period, Langhammer with a couple of good saves, keeping the game in their favor. And then a few seconds later, a couple of big hits for us in the defensive zone. And then skipping down to the last 10 minutes or so, my dad's creative character finally finds the back of the net, getting a goal. Ninth on the season, making it 1-1 and tying the game up. Game's been interesting so far. Um, I'm not sensing the laziness, but I'm not sensing the passion that we usually play with or whatever. It's just very neutral. It's a very neutral kind of game. Uh, we're both playing, I think, at our levels evenly. Good defensive all around. Good, you know, good, good defense, good offense. All around, it's a good... Uh, strategic game so I haven't really sensed that we're dominating or that they're dominating us a few minutes later Bernie with a good save point blank keeping the game all tied up and then a couple minutes later Nyquist finds the back of the net seventh on the year he should honestly have a lot more goals than that but he gets his goal in uh, making it two to one and we get the advantage looking pretty good skipping down to the last two minutes Bernie with another good save defense is just Really disappointing right now. I'm um, noticing the efforts going down just a little bit. Uh, they're kind of getting some easy shots on Bernier, and Bernier's keeping us where it needs to be. Skipping into the third period, about four minutes in. Huge hit from Arturo. Very good play. Unfortunately, the puck bounces to one of their players, and they put it behind Bernier. Can't really fault the defense on that one. It was just an unfortunate play of event. Then about 30 seconds later, Brooklyn with another goal that gets called back. So they review to see if it gets hit in with a glove, and the review says, unfortunately, it was a good goal. It's now 3-2 in favor of the Brooklyn Brawlers. Let's see if we can somehow get it back. 30 seconds later, a huge hit for our team once again, and then a couple minutes later, riding off that momentum. Dad with a power play goal, getting his 10th on the season, second of the game. Let's go. All tied up. We can win this game. I just, I don't like how tight this game is right now, but... Let's see if we can pull it off. Three minutes later, Bernier with a nice save, keeping the game all tied up. And then five minutes later, Brooklyn with a goal of their own to make it four to three. Five minutes to go in the period. We can still tie it up. We can still push it to OT, get a W, whatever it is. Let's see if we can pull it off. Three minutes to go. Langhammer with a good save, keeping the game in their favor. And then about a minute later, off the post, the puck goes. And we are just getting haunted right now with these post shots. And the game stays in their favor. I pull the goalie and call a timeout. What about a minute remaining, hopefully sparking something in the team, giving them their energy back. Unfortunately, Langhammer made a bunch of good saves towards the end of the game. And we are unfortunately unable to beat probably one of the worst teams in the league right now, the Brooklyn Brawlers. And we fall to them 4-3 to three in regulation. So, um, unfortunate end to the episode. But like I said, I'm not going to be able to win every single game. It was a relatively good game. Uh, we're 7-3 and three in the last 10, so I can't complain, but it is unfortunate that we're kind of losing these easy points. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap up the video, and that'll be it. Alright, so we're back in the menu. We are 36 games in, 19-13-4 in the last 36, and it's not looking too, too bad. We're, again, 7-3 in the last 10, and uh, we got some big games coming up in the next 9. I believe the next 3 games is against all NHL teams, Vancouver, you saw, Winnipeg, and LA. Oh, and then Calgary. Nice. Beautiful. Four NHL teams back to back to back to back. And then, actually, I can just skip down here. Um, wow. Four, five, six, seven, eight. The next episode might be a little rough. The next nine games will be against all NHL teams. We will not get a single break. So... We are going to have to play really, really hard. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, points here, see how we're doing. Tatar, I believe, is still on top with 33 points, 18 goals. Looking really good. He's been slowing down in this episode, um, at least towards the, like the latter, the later part of the video. Uh, he hasn't really been doing much. So Ronnie's almost at 30 points for the season. Cassian, JB. Paul's looking pretty good. Antonio's doing well. 
I think the team overall is doing not that bad. Again, we're, getting, we're playing against teams that we should be beating and scoring goals and looking pretty good. So hopefully everybody develops from this next year and starts becoming really, really good so we can play against the NHL teams and stuff like that. Um, hopefully we make it into the playoff bracket. You know, top 18 will get the opportunity to, uh, well, you know, the, the bottom four will be able to fight for it. And then, uh, you know, top 16 teams will go and play for the cup but let's see we've got i think we were 25th in that last game we're probably around the same number right now probably like 26th or 25th still let us see thunder bay still at while wow, they at third now good for them um uh, let's see where are we at yeah we dropped down one spot all right so we're 26 in the lead right now uh 42 points you know not looking too too bad we can just salvage a bunch of the points that we're supposed to be winning uh, I think we'll be all right. We're scoring a lot of goals, and we're also letting in a lot of goals. <laughs> um, but uh, we're not too far away from the from the spots here. We're only three points away from the 18th position. We just need to get some good, solid wins, and we'll be looking pretty good. But, um, yeah, that's all I have for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are enjoying the journey so far. It's been a rough season. Uh, next episode is, is going to be rough 100%. I'll be surprised if we win more than five games in the next episode. Uh, it'll really be a testament to how uh, good this team is. But, yeah, I'm going to leave it here. We'll pick it up right where we left off. And hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. I'll see you all in the next episode.